Good evening, fans. Thanks for joining us here for the first edition of our Stony Brook Coaches Show. I am joined by the head men's basketball coach, Coach Jeff Bowles. Coach, I know this time of year certainly is busy for you guys, so thanks again for taking the time to talk to us and the fans. We do appreciate it. Oh, well, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, Coach, you're about one year in on the job now, about just about a full calendar year. Uh, you and your family have kind of hopped over the country a little bit, but your first stop here on Long Island. So before we talk shop a little bit, what's it been like for you moving the family here to Long Island, the community, all that? Yeah, it's uh, hard to believe a year's already been, you yeah. know, passed. And, and uh, you know, it's coming up on the one year for me, uh, press conference, you know, in, in this yeah. arena. And, and uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. And, and you know, I think, uh, you know, coming in, I didn't really know what to expect. But the, the community, uh, the fans all embraced me and my family from day one. And, uh, you know, we love it here. Uh, I have a 14-year-old daughter, 10-year-old uh, son, my wife. And, uh, you know, we, we've really tried to, uh, you know, make ourselves Long Islanders. Um, you know, we were able to go to uh, Fire Island, Gilgo Beach, Montauk, go into the city for Christmas. And, and uh, you know, couldn't ask for a better first year. Awesome, awesome, excellent. I'm glad you're enjoying the island here. Speaking of island, the facility here behind us, I know you love the energy we have here, with the fans, the band, the students. Uh, how has that been for you playing here in this home gym? You know, it, it, it was probably exceeded my expectations. I think, you know, first and foremost, this is a, a phenomenal arena. Uh, it's a perfect size, 4,000. You know, it's a yeah. brand new arena. And, uh, you know, if a, a game day atmosphere was phenomenal from the band to the cheerleaders to the dance team, to the community, the student section is just, you know, a big time home court advantage for us. And, and uh, you know, going around the league and going around other places in the country, you know, there's not too many places like this uh, with a community that supports us. Excellent, excellent. Well, we're going to dive into the past season, talk a little bit further. But before that, we caught up with the women's coach, Carolyn McCombs, a little earlier. So let's cut away for a second, see what she has to say about her season and a look forward at next year to come for them. Thanks, Chris. We're here with the women's basketball head coach, Caroline McCombs. And coach, we're going to look ahead to the 2017-18 year in just a second. But first, let's take a jump back and take a look at the senior class that just graduated. You know, four players, you know, you had Chris Desconomio, Corey Bain Walker, Annie Scarrow, Biz Manor. Just what, did the, what legacy did they leave behind an example for these new players that are going to be coming in and leading the program next year? Definitely, um, you know, Corey and Krista and Biz and Annie, um, just their senior leadership, you know, this past season, uh, you know, playing with me for three years, Annie for two years, um, you know, Corey and Krista just mainstays in our lineup, staples. Um, coaches always wonder when they're going to graduate um, and you appreciate, you know, the things and the contributions they've made to their, our program, you know, throughout their career. And then you move into what is the off-season period here up until, you know, summer workouts and, and those things start. What are you guys doing right now and what are you looking for in your team in these, you know, couple of months before the summer hits as far as improvement is concerned? Sure, it's just uh, trust in the process. You know, every day trying to improve, um, doing a lot of things in the weight room, on the basketball court, adding in yoga once a week. So trying to have a variety um, and just, you know, developing them overall. Um, our skill set's really important right now. We're very young and so just getting them on the court, getting them healthy, um, but every day just trusting the process, understanding that it's not going to happen overnight but um, if you do these things every day you'll see results. And you mentioned the youth of the team is that a huge part of what the staff is working on right now as far as just getting them comfortable within the college game so they can really excel to their talents on the floor when games come around? Sure everything we're doing I we're the leaders you know Aliyah will be our only senior on the roster next year so we're just very young um, so we really have to uh, develop them like I said every day on the basketball court um, you know it's it's fun it's exciting to see that process already beginning and um, you know we don't have enough to play pickup yet uh, we'll do that in the summertime when our newcomers um, get here but but really you know it's individual skill development strength and conditioning um, and getting us healthy and you mentioned yoga you know it's I guess a non-traditional thing as far as workouts are concerned what what benefits does that have for an athlete in the offseason as far as getting ready for the season? Yeah, just their flexibility, strength in a different way. Um, yesterday was our first day actually um, being able to do it, so we'll be doing that you know, once a week for the next few weeks. Um, and it's something that they really enjoyed doing, so I think that that's just another way, um, just taking a break. We work on uh, mobility throughout the season, but just a full, we did an hour and 15 minutes of yoga, so I think they'll uh, continue to see the benefits they'll longer that we do it. And the roster is going to fill out in the summer when you get your newcomers coming in. Going through the uh, the incoming freshman class here, first you have Kenzie Boucher out of Pittsburgh. What does she bring to this program? 
Well, she's a front court player for us, so really excited about um, bringing in another post player. She's strong. She's physical. Um, she runs up and down the floor tremendously well. Um, she can shoot the 15-foot shot, um, and she's a winner. She's, uh, and we'll say that about all of our young ladies that we're bringing in. Um, comes from a very well-respected high school program in Mount Lebanon High School, um, but just everything um, that she does encompasses what a student athlete looks like at Stony Brook. And then moving forward here, you have Chance Cherry, a guard out of Georgia, coming in, looking to fill in the backcourt uh, that you mentioned from Corey and Krista graduating. What does she bring to your team? She's a point guard. Um, her team lost in the state championship game um, in Georgia this past season. So um, she's tough. She's a defender. Um, she can handle the ball. Um, really trying to play uh, more of an up-tempo style where she'll be able to create points, you know, offense from her defense. Um, but she's a high-energy player and just excited about, again, the program that she's coming from, Southwest DeKalb High School in Georgia, um, you know, and losing in that state state championship game, but just um, what an exciting season that they had this season. And then another young forward coming in here, John A. Cox out of Portsmouth, the six foot forward here. What does she bring uh, to your team as far as skill sets down low? John A's a scorer. Um, she shoots a three. She really attacks off the bask, off the off the bounce. Um, and so just having that mentality, everybody doesn't have a scoring mentality. That's something that um, she does that we need for our team. So she's not afraid to take that shot. Um, she's, again, like I said, great at attacking the basket. Um, I think one thing that she does um, that Krista brought to the table is just she's a, a slasher and a cutter really good um, with the not without the ball in her hands. So excited about um, you know her coming in here. And then another uh, forward coming in from a little closer to home in Connecticut, India Pagan, a little over six foot inside. What does she bring as far as forward is concerned? Sure. Uh, I mean, India is really a true center um, for us. Um, what she does is she, she plays on the national team, the under-19 Puerto Rican national team. She plays with Gio. Um, so she'll be able to do that in the summer. They're actually playing over in Italy um, this summer. They won a state championship in Connecticut, New London High School. And, um, you know, she's in. She's outside. Um, she's great at the pick and roll. You know, she can score with both hands. Um, again, something that um, we struggled with our inside play with some injuries this past season. So um, she's able to come in and, and, and really be that force in the paint for us. And then a second Pittsburgh recruit, Haley Zeiss, a 5'10 guard. What is she bringing to your backcourt? Um, Haley's grit, Haley's toughness, Haley's a winner. Um, again, they played in the state championship game um, this past season. They won a Whippeal championship, which is in western Pennsylvania, a very big deal. Um, uh, you know, I've known Haley since she was this tall coming to our um, camp when I was at the University of Pittsburgh. So, um, you, know, you know, Haley finds a way to win anywhere that she's been and everything that she's done. Um, so, so just excited about, you know, her energy, her toughness. Uh, at the small forward position. One more player coming into your squad as far as JUCO players are concerned, Cheyenne Clark, a forward out of Mohawk Valley. Um, well, Cheyenne actually led the nation in rebounding uh, this past season. 19 rebounds a game, 19 points a game. Um, she's high energy. She's a hybrid four. Um, you know, the, her team uh, lost in the final four of the Junior College National Tournament. So, um, like I said, uh, having that, that uh, players that can come in from winning programs. But, um, you know, she, she's just that rebounding presence that we haven't had um, that we need in, in just being able to defend multiple positions as well. Well, thank you very much, Coach McCombs. The future is bright with some fresh, talented faces coming into your Seawolves women's basketball team. Back over to Chris. He has more with Coach Bowles. That sounds excellent. I know Coach McCombs is excited about the newcomers coming in and the 2017-2018 season as well. So, Coach Bowles, looking back at your first season here at Stony Brook, uh, came into the conference, picked seventh in the coaches poll, but finished second overall with a 12-4 and four conference record. Must have felt great for you and the coaching staff and the players to achieve that success. Uh, what was it like for you and the coaching side going through your first season here at Stony Brook? I think, you know, look, looking into the uh, conference season, you know, we, we kind of used that to our advantage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I told our guys, I said, hey, we were picked preseason seventh out of nine you know, on paper and by the other coaches in the league. So the big thing for me was, hey, don't play with a chip on your shoulder, play with a boulder. You know, that, that should be, you know, disappointing to you to be picked that low. And, and uh, you know, rightfully so, we lost a lot of guys uh, to graduation and, and external factors. But I think, uh, you know, our guys really believed and uh, had a lot of confidence. And it really started, Chris, uh, game one at New Hampshire. Uh, we were one of two teams to go three out of four on the road. 
and we were going to New Hampshire, which was preseason number two, had a lot of experience back, and we found a way to win the game by three, and I think that really set the tone for the rest of the uh, uh, conference play and you know, winning that first road game. Yeah, so certainly conference play went great for you guys. The season started a little shaky, uh, starting out 0-4, and in your fifth game, you're trailing Hampton 36-26 at halftime. And you've talked a lot about that halftime kind of being a turning point in your season and setting tone for the rest. So what happened in that game that you think helped carry the energy forward throughout the season? Yeah, I think, you know, we lost our first game to Columbia. You know, great atmosphere, and, and it was a seven-point game. You know, had a chance uh, late, um, you know, didn't, didn't get it done. And then we go to Maryland, to Boston College. Um, played Boston College, both of them played tough. And then uh, we played uh, Towson at Towson, got beat. So we were sitting at 0-4 and, and, and uh, you know, going into Hampton, which, you know, there's never a must-win game, but it was a must-win game. And we, we weren't playing very well, and we were down 10 at halftime, and, you know, I kind of went out of character uh, at halftime and, and really challenged Lucas Woodhouse and Cam, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Mitchell, you know, just to, two seniors to step up. and, and uh, Thankfully, they responded, and you know, only one broken clipboard this year, and that was during that game. Um, but uh, you know, I really, really respect those two for yeah. for leading us in the second half, and we outscored them by 20, won the game by 10. And I, I really think that set the tone for the rest of the season. Absolutely, certainly that point forward, the team just played with a certain energy and aggressiveness you saw both at home and on the road, which certainly helped. So. Uh, Looking for next year now, let's talk about 2017-18 a little bit. Going to open the season on November 11th, taking on the Maryland Terrapins at the brand new Nassau Coliseum. That's got to be kind of a treat for you and the staff and the players to go help open that facility and be one of the first college basketball games to happen there at the new Coliseum. Yeah, it's going to be a great atmosphere and and anytime you can go into an arena like that and you know, we like to think we're Long Island's team and and, a chance to go down there and open that arena against an opponent like Maryland will definitely be a challenge, but uh, it'll be exciting. I think, yeah. you know, the first college basketball game in that arena. Uh, look forward to uh, getting the Seawolf, uh, you know, crowd down there and uh, see what happens. Yeah, that certainly is going to be very exciting as well. You talked a little bit about losing your two seniors, Cam Mitchell, Lucas Woodhouse, but a lot of guys are coming back next year. And a couple of guys in particular I want to get your thoughts on. First off, it's Aquazi Yaboa coming off of his redshirt freshman season, especially how he ended the season. Over the last six games, he averaged 15 points and eight rebounds. How do you want to see him develop and keep that energy going into his sophomore campaign? Yeah, you know, if you look at those two seniors, it's going to be a big loss. You know, sure. definitely leadership-wise, and Lucas, you know, really carried us. But a quasi down the stretch was probably our second best player, and you know, the the, the things he did uh, early in the year as a freshman, he went through kind of a freshman slump per se in the middle of the year, mm-hmm. and then at the end he really closed strong. Yeah. And uh, you know, we were going to him on the block, running plays for him, and. And I think the, the momentum leaving at the end of this year going into next year will be huge for him. Uh, he's got an opportunity to uh, try out for the uh, Great Britain uh, under-20 national team this summer. And uh, hopefully I think he'll make the team and, and get some more experience, but I think he'll have a great sophomore year. Absolutely. Definitely looking forward to that as well. Uh, another guy looking about, talking about down low is Tyrell Sturdivant going into his senior year uh, here at Stony Brook. This season really kind of broke out, played behind Jamil Werney a lot his first two years, certainly learned a lot from him in practice as we saw from some of his left-handed hooks yep. uh, down low. But he had a career-high 28 over UMass Lowell, scored 14-10 and 10 versus Maryland. What are you hoping to get out of Ty in his senior year? Yeah, I thought you know, Tyrell started the season out uh, you know, pretty strong, and, yeah. and uh, you know, even to start a conference play, he was shooting high 70% from the field. You know, won, won us a few games at New Hampshire, uh, you know, obviously the Albany game at home uh, in the regular season. But uh, I, I was really proud of Ty and Jake Petrus both. They both did a great job of changing their bodies. You know, when I got here, Ty was about 21, 22% body fat, 252 pounds. You know, he got with our strength coach and, and, and got down to 227, which I thought really benefited wow. him. And now this summer offseason will be uh, big for him just to continue to work on his skill level, his shot and uh, get in the weight room and, and even transform his body even more. Yeah, for sure. Uh, certainly the front court looks strong coming back, but one question we have going forward is the guard play. As you mentioned, Lucas and Cam graduating. What kind of guys do you see filling into those roles going into next year, bringing the basketball up the court? Yeah, that, that'll be the million dollar question. You know, mm-hmm. replacing Luke, you know, it's kind of like, hey, you're not going to replace Jamil. Right. So, you know, replacing a guy like Luke's going to be by committee and, you know, it's going to be a big spring and summer and fall for, for a lot of these guys. Uh, the newcomers, the returners, 
and uh, really excited to see the competition. Anytime you have competition, you know, it's going to you know, force people to, to uh, improve their game, and you know, that will be the exciting part about it. Great. So definitely looking forward to that. Uh, maybe some of these new guys can play a role. So I know a lot of our fans are interested to hear your take on some of the new guys coming in to the team next year. Uh, let's start with looking at Elijah Olani, the 6'5 forward from Newark, New Jersey. Uh, what do you see out of him coming in, and how do you guys go about recruiting a player like that? Yeah, really, really excited about our incoming class. Uh, you know, high character young men, uh, great personalities, uh, came from winning programs, and, uh, you know, obviously talented uh, and and academics are serious, you know, coming to a university like Stony Brook. But, yeah. you know, Elijah is the full package. He's charismatic, he's uh, athletic, he's great off the court, great student. And, uh, you know, I really think he's going to have an unbelievable four year career here. And, you know, he'll be expected to come in and contribute right away. And, uh, you know, really excited to have him in our program. You know, we talked about replacing uh, Cam and Lucas and those guards. One guard coming in is going to be Corey Long. He's a six foot two guard out of Cincinnati, Ohio, kind of your neck of the woods a little bit. Uh, what do you see out of Corey coming in? Yeah, really excited about Corey as well. You know, another uh, winning program. Uh, you know, had a great senior season, and uh, you know, just a, a great young man off the court. You know, went through some trials and tribulations. Uh, lost his mom a couple years ago to pancreatic cancer, uh, which you know has kind of helped shape him who he is and, and uh, you know who he's going to become. But uh, you know, great young man. You know, he's a combo guard. Can play the one. Can play the two. Can really shoot the basketball. And, uh, you know, he needs to get in the weight room, get stronger like most freshmen, but uh, really excited as well to get him up here. I, absolutely. That should be exciting coming in. The other guard coming in this class is Jordan McKenzie. He's a 6'1 guard uh, from Concord, New Jersey. Tell us a little bit about, about him, about his game, what you'll hope yeah, to jo see. Jordan uh, you know, won a state championship in, in North Carolina, and uh, he went to Hargrave Military Academy, a prep school, mm -hmm. to uh, continue to develop. And uh, you know, was a part of a winning program. They won, I think, 38, 40 games. So another guy coming in who knows how to win. Uh, you know, very dynamic with the ball. A lot like Lucas, he's got great vision. Can really shoot the ball. He's athletic, and uh, you know, he'll he'll make some highlight plays. Uh, looking forward to the, those two guys coming in, see them compete for those guard spots next year. And the big man coming in, Anthony Chefu, six eight forward from uh, Westchester, Pennsylvania. A lot of our fans might know that name from his brother Daniel, who was on the Villanova championship team. So tell us a little bit about Anthony coming. Yeah, in. you know, Anthony, uh, you know, we, we were excited. You know, when I first saw Anthony, I didn't think we can get him, and you know, we, we did a great job of just staying in there, building a relationship with him, and. You know, as you mentioned, his brother plays for the Washington Wizards, and, and uh, Anthony was on a team at Westtown who won a state championship, uh, another successful program. Uh, so he knows how to win, knows what it takes. Uh, he's played with other great players, and, and hopefully, you know, like his brother, his brother grew a couple inches in college. You know, he's six foot eight, 230 pounds right now. So, uh, you know, just a really athletic guy, can shoot the ball from the perimeter, and, uh, you know, he'll, he'll be a big presence for us inside. Well, I know you're very excited about this recruiting class coming in. Obviously, a lot of talent. Looking forward to them. Uh, that just about wraps it up, fans. That's all we got here from Coach Bowles. So I want to thank you for your time, Coach, coming in. I know you guys are busy, but it means a lot to us. You take the time to sit down and talk to us a little bit. So uh, thank my, you. My pleasure. And, uh, you know, like I said, the first year was awesome. Next year, we're really looking forward to it. And uh, go see Wolves. Absolutely. Before we cut away, we got some prizes for you. So all of our season ticket holders who either renewed or purchased season tickets before today's show were entered to win our raffle. So let's cut away right now, give out those prizes. But fans, thanks again for joining us. We'll see you real soon, and let's go Seawolves. Hey Seawolves fans, here are the winners of our season ticket holder sweepstakes. Congratulations to David Lippi. You've won a round of golf with head coach Jeff Bowles and assistant coach Gino Ford. Next one up is Marion Newfield. You have won Jamil's Warney signed bobblehead. Congratulations. And Loretta Diamond, you have won tickets to Nassau Coliseum to our game against Maryland on November 11th. Next up, Maggie Shady and Robert McGolden. You have won VIP suite tickets to a regular season game. Congrats. Next up, Chris Damianos. You have won a Jamal Warney framed jersey. Next we have Joseph Topek. You've won a signed uh, Island Federal Credit Union arena seat. We just want to say thank you to all our season ticket holders and we can't wait to see you next year. And we are Long Island's team.